thanks for all of you uh, coming in uh, this evening, uh, Friday. Normally, I would be in happy hour, but uh, don't have. Let me just, uh, <laughs> just, uh, just. Can I share my slides? Yes, you may. Sure. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, okay. Just. Uh, all right. Let me. Okay. So, can you see? Yeah. Yes. Can okay, okay. Can thanks for inviting me. Uh, to uh, to uh, you know share with you just some uh, stuff that I do, and how I can help you. Um, when when first uh, when Max first approached me, I think he 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 was just being concerned that uh, you know the job market isn't that great, uh, and uh, you know startups are laying off a lot of people and all that, and uh, everybody's affected, uh, developers and all that. Right, so um, just uh, so today is just a really a finding out, get to know you guys, uh, because you know as a career coach, normally coaching takes a process. So I'm not here to present some magic bullets or something like that, you know. Uh, but but really just to find out some of uh, you, uh, what are your concerns and all that. Uh, I had a I had a brief look at the form, and uh, so I know what some of uh, you guys are going through and and where your needs are, but. Uh, maybe I just like to hear more from you uh, later. Okay, so let me just click on the next thing. So th this is, I mean, if you all haven't read my background, then uh, never mind. You know, I don't want to bore bore you with it. But basically, I I used to come from the startup sector, uh, and then I made a career switch some years ago, um, and uh, I was a recruiter for a short time, and and then now I'm on my own. I do freelance. Uh, work. Uh, I work with uh, a technology futurist to conduct a skills future course. So uh, something that we are both passionate about. Uh, he talks about disruptions. I talk about careers. So that's how we uh, we do things together. And um, so I I just uh, approach career coaching from a startup mindset. So it's a little bit uh, different from the traditional career coaches. Anyways, uh, you can always read more about me online and, and all that. So just a very, very quick one, uh, where, where, where I've worked and what I've done. Um, so the first half of my career I spent in NUS Enterprise. So I was there for 10 years. Um, and primarily, I worked with tech innovators, uh, uh, scientists, researchers, and uh, students, student entrepreneurs, and, and all that. So uh, that was the uh, first half of my career. Then I worked shortly in the private education sector, um, uh, thinking that <laughs> funny things that I thought that, you know, a lot of startups fail because they lack the skills. So I went to the skills uh, part thing, you know, hoping to, to equip people with more skills. And then when I went to the uh, private education sector, I realized that uh, uh, it's not really about skills. Uh, it's not about the ideas either. I think a, a lot of time it's got to do with um, uh, the purpose, uh, your career path and your, your mindset. So that's where I made a, a, a more formal switch to uh, career development into the HR field. And uh, actually, I my passion is really helping mid-career professionals above 40 to help them do a career switch. Uh, because in my previous uh, work, I uh, that, that's my target audience. I, I, I enjoy and I'm passionate about helping this group of people uh, making career switch. Uh, usually, they are in their mid-40s to 50s, right? Uh, so today, this talk, uh, I can see there are young people on this uh, group. Uh, I still I still like hang, hanging around with young people. So uh, and uh, so that's why I agree to what uh, uh, Max uh, asked me to uh, talk about. So let me just just I really want to get to know you. Um, so I would like I would like you to do it this way. So instead of just the traditional way of telling people, "Hi, my name is so and so. I'm a I'm a software engineer. I'm a career coach. I'm a businessman." Uh, I would like you to share in this way. I my name is this. I build or I do or I help. You know for who to do what. So I give you my example below. I help make career PMETs to make career transition. So I want something really short, and I hope that uh, in next a couple of minutes I can hear from what you guys uh, really do for others. So can I just maybe just I mean, let me just stretch my screen a little bit. Uh, so the top of my screen, I see Max. Uh, I know Max, so I will skip him. Uh, so I see this person called Xian Jin. 
Nice Hi. to see you. Yes, Can I know what you do? Uh, hi, my name is Jian Jun. I am looking for a data science job right now or okay. data engineering. Um, but like after doing it for a while, I realized I don't really like doing stats and all the statistical analysis is really, really boring. Um, so then I went into, I just got a web dev bootcamp course recently and I'm trying it out. So far I'm on HTML, CSS and bootstrap and I like it so far. So I'm trying to explore more in this path to see if it's more viable and brings more job satisfaction as compared to a uh, data. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. So you want to, you, you, you want to build, uh, and, uh, data science is not really your cup of tea. Yeah, it's not. Okay. All right. Ken, thanks very much. Uh, how about Xiong Tech? Wow. Hello. Really cool glasses. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello, I'm a software engineer. So currently I'm a contractor for uh, ST, ST engineering. Okay. For technologies. So, okay. uh, so what I'm here to ask is, uh, what do you think about, like, uh, should I stay in a, uh, in a job for more than five years, or is it uh, more advisable for me to like uh, jump across different company? And uh, because you you get expo you have, you have more exposure instead of uh, staying in the company for a long time and then just limited to have a certain experience within a certain domain. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what more I'm interested about. To know because okay. uh, technology is moving very fast, so it will be quite hard to keep up. Uh. Okay, so yeah, the main question is whether you want to stay five years or go. Yeah, correct. That means, uh, should I should I stay in a job for more than a certain number of years, or should I uh, jump like two years, every two years, every three years, like okay. a job opening kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much. Uh. All right, just a quick share about your, uh, yourself. Uh. Uh, we'll talk about your, your, your needs and wants later because I got them all down in the other slide uh, based on the comments you gave in the form. How about Benjamin Lim? Thanks, Yong Tech. Uh. Benjamin. Hello. Hi. Um, yeah, Ben here. I help Treasury at Senate Chartered monitor their bond positions and swaps. Okay. Yeah. So you're working in the bank, currently employed. Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. So you are Benny, Daniel or Benjamin? Uh, Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin, okay. So I thought I heard Ben. Uh, Daniel, okay. Thanks. All right, great. Uh, Alfred. Hi. Right. Uh, so my name is Alfred. Uh, I help companies um, find out more what, they, what else they can do with their internal data sets. So uh, data consultancy, if you will. Okay, okay. So you're a consultant. Okay, do you like that? Not really. So I'm, I'm actually in quite a similar position as Xian Jin, where I'm actually looking at transitioning into a software development role. Yes. Transition. Okay. Okay, okay. Some, uh, okay. Uh, Ken, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, thanks very much. How about, uh, let me see, Ying Hao. Yeah, uh, hi, my name is Ying Hao. Uh, I'm a web developer uh, for Mokori. I build uh, trading web software, yeah. Okay, so you are currently employed, okay. Uh, working with a uh, uh, trading software. Yeah, so okay. for me, it's, uh, my contract will be up soon. Then I'm just wondering like what kind of, uh, uh, how do you calibrate your uh, compensation in a time like crisis like this, because this is quite unprecedented. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so you're concerned yeah, about so, how to what negotiate your salary? Yes, correct. Because you don't want to. I mean, if you go by the rates that are like half a year ago, yeah, that's too much to ask, really. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much I want to find out. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're very Thank considerate you. for for the employer. Okay. <laughs> very good. Uh, I heard that some people still asking for a raise. 
even in uh, COVID times. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to price yourself out of the market, right? Yeah. True, true, true. Right, right. Yeah, we always go according to times. Okay, thanks, uh, Ying Hao. How about Thank you. Uh, Ying Qian? Is Ying Qian there? Yeah, hi. Uh, hello. I think maybe I'm one of the oldest here. I'm actually the, in the 50s. Yeah, so, oh. uh, yeah. So, uh, previously, I'm from another world in the sense that I'm an engineer, a chemical engineer, and uh, I've been doing all these projects and so forth. And um, um, I've been out for uh, several years in the sense that I'm um, doing things. Uh, I, okay, several things I'm doing, of which one of them actually I'm coming up with an uh, uh, overseas company in the aviation side, and they do predictive analytics, uh, whereby they predict uh, planes that come in to get service. Um, what are the parts that can fail uh, before it happens? And so this predictive analytics. So actually, the, we are still very small looking for um, the projects coming. Uh, in, in Europe, they've been doing fairly okay, but because of COVID situation, uh, we almost kind of get into a project in Singapore, uh, but because COVID and so um, hanging there for a moment. So in, in a sense, it's actually talking about those predictive analytics and solutions that we have to solve uh, things which can improve productivity for uh, manufacturing with a good track record. And uh, on the other part of it is actually, actually I'm also involved in some um, product development. Uh, yes, actually, I don't know whether it's a relevant here or not, but Instead, basically, um, we talk about energy savings uh, using a product that has a neural network base um, that we actually bring solutions to the real environments uh, to save energy by integrating smart lighting and smart uh, aircon. And just spoke to someone from uh, NU NTU uh, talking about saying integrating it to bring in more efficiency. Right. And they are interested in so called the AI uh, perhaps uh, to make the building smart. So there's using AI deep learning okay. and so forth. Yeah. Okay. So are you currently that's, employed or self-employed? Uh, I'm running my company, so I'm looking into integrating on products, and also as I say, with this part on the. Um, on okay, the, so you uh, run your own company. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, for sharing. Uh, how about P W Wong? Oh hi, I'm P Wei. I'm a web developer working in a startup. Uh, yeah. You are a web developer working in a startup. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, your startup is in which area of work? What does it do? Uh, it can be considered as a fintech. It is actually based in Indonesia. Uh, and we, um, uh, create products that can help Indonesian to uh file their file and pay their tax. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, how about, uh, oh, we have another lady. I think Denise. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Uh, hi I'm Denise. I actually, I'm working in the marketing field in education. So basically, uh, I just took on a course in uh, a boot camp in software development. So I, yeah, now I'm currently still in the marketing role. So uh, in the near future, I foresee myself to be joining the uh, tech sector uh, in software development. So I'm keen to find out a bit more about the industry, how we do it and things like that. So you're currently doing the part-time studies? Yes. Okay. Mm. All right. Wow. So uh, studying and working at the same time, not easy. Yeah. All right. And you want, <laughs> yeah, never easy. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much. Um, how about uh, Nevin? Nevin. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Nevin. Uh, I just graduated from a full-time coding bootcamp in March of three months, and now I am looking for employment as either a full-stack developer or a front-end developer. Okay. Okay. And what was your previous job? Was uh, it? It was related to web development, but we were using WordPress and mostly plugins, so we. We didn't have to deal a lot with the with, uh, coding itself, so I decided to like you know to get a step further and you know be be like the person who can like create a plugin or something along those lines. Okay, 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 good. Well, okay, thanks very much. A lot of uh, ambitious, aspiring software developers here. Uh, Benjamin Lin. 
Have we? Is another? Okay, this. Oh, sorry. There's two Benjamin over here. Okay. Uh, same icon. Okay, sorry. Uh, Gabriel. Hi guys, I'm Gabriel. Uh, I'm out as a fund and developer for the police force. You just graduated from as a front end developer. Uh, no, I'm I'm a front end developer uh, working for the police force. So I oh, built okay. the police force website. Oh, okay, okay, working for police, uh, the website. Okay. Okay, so recently I filed a report with the police, uh, so maybe uh, I went through one of your forms. <laughs> yeah, the forms is quite messy actually. We are fixing it. Oh, is it? It's not too bad, already. You know, I I well, I'm quite impressed with the work done so far by the police. Okay, now now you're there. I know I, I I'm safe. So next time I file a second complaint or something like that, I uh, I know I'll have better user experience. Okay. Uh, thanks very much, Gabriel. How about Elwin Tan? Um. So hi. Uh, my name's Elwin, and I built uh, tech for the public good on behalf of the Singapore government. So you are with what GovTech? Um. Yes. Uh, specifically, open government products. Open government products. We are a team behind Parking SG. Oh, okay. Okay, that's my favorite app, by the way. Thanks, bro. Thanks so much for doing that. Uh, team. Okay, so you are with, so you are GovTech, lah, basically. Yes. Okay. And uh, so what, you are, you are thinking of a career move? Career change? I'm, I'm just observing proceedings tonight, so uh, ah, don't mind okay. me. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. Yeah. Uh, how about Benny? Thanks, Owen. Benny? Yes, uh, I'm Benny. I'm a post tech web developer, just graduated from Poly. So I'm going for NS soon. Okay, so just graduated from Poly in what? Uh, business Enterprise IT, SAP. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. going to Army soon. Yeah. So I'm just looking about like what's uh what I can do now like upskilling and how can I be prepared when I, when I finish MS. Okay, so it depends how how long you have to how long more do you have to wait to go to NS and you can do something now? Uh, you're talking about months. Uh, two months. Okay, so yeah. you have no time. You only got two months left before yeah. you go. Up. Okay, all right. Uh. Okay, thanks, Benny. And uh, wow, I've got uh, a wee bit more. How about Urban Tan? Hi, can you uh, can you hear me loud and clear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Urban. So uh, initially, I started my career as a software development. Then uh, later part, I moved on to system engineering. So. Uh, mainly system integration, deployments, and support. So uh, I was thinking, you know, I'm thinking to maybe go back to development. So uh, that's why I joined here recently. Yes. Recently you joined what? Sorry? I, I'm thinking to go back to development work. So because currently I'm now in the system engineering. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you're currently employed, right? No, I'm not. Okay, okay. All right, Ken. Thanks very much. Uh, Bur Burak Satar. Uh, I think he's, there's something wrong with his... For okay, but he yeah. typed it. Yeah, right. correct, correct. Okay, got it. So he built a deep learning project for university of student. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, William Howe. Hi everyone, uh, I'm William. So currently I'm working at Agoda, uh, mostly on the search uh, systems. So, okay. yeah. Okay, and uh, you want to know? Uh, I mean, I'm just here to Kepo, uh, but uh, maybe one of the questions I want to answer is uh, what kind of considerations are there if you want to move overseas to work? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, depends where overseas. Have you thought about which part? US maybe. Okay. All right, Ken. Thanks very much. Uh, 
uh, Muhammad Ibrahim. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is. Uh, I'm currently working with Lazada for uh, past two years. I have nine years of experience in IT infrastructure and cloud. Um, currently, I joined as a, a technical project manager in the infrastructure team uh, responsible of Lazada production. Uh, last two years, I delivered early cloud infrastructure in APAC region. This role mainly focus on uh, early cloud data center built uh, power cooling van networks and delivery. Also, I am part of a uh, steering committee to uh, migrate Red Mart AWS infrastructure, infrastructure to Ali Cloud and hybrid data center in Singapore. My team is responsible uh, of Red Mart production in a AWS and Ali Cloud. Uh, so in the last two years, I'm working with three different teams within Lazada, uh, Lazada infrastructure, Alibaba infrastructure, and corporate security and risk management. So uh, if you see my uh, profile, I changed uh, uh, three teams within two years within Lazada itself. So currently I want to explore into a cloud solution architecture kind of role uh, within Singapore. I'm an expat living in Singapore. Okay, okay, okay. You just, you basically want to move on to another cloud company? Uh, uh, kind of a, yeah, kind of a cloud solution provider for the end customers uh, to onboard the new, new, uh, uh, new customers who are in a physical on-prem data center into a cloud solution based kind of. Okay, okay. Sounds good. Okay, thanks very much. Um, if I miss anybody, uh, Lee JM. Yeah, hi, I'm Jamie. Uh, working at HP at the moment as a software engineer. HP. Yeah, you are Packer Enterprise. Okay. Okay, and thinking of moving on. Yeah, trying to explore other industries. But still IT lah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, got it. Uh, what, what do you do in HP Enterprise? Uh, currently doing a mix of work. Uh, I'm currently not doing documentation, but sometimes I do uh, front-end uh, proof of concept for clients. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, I've got Eunice. Did I miss anybody? Eunice? Okay, Eunice. Okay, you completed a coding bootcamp looking for entry level role in web. Okay, let me just jot that down. Okay. All right, how about uh, Hui Chie? Thanks, Eunice. Hi, everyone. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so I, same as Eunice, my, I just graduated from uh, boot camp as well, according boot camp. So I was there for three months full time, and then now I've graduated for about one and a half months, going two months. Yeah, so I'm currently job searching. Yeah, so okay. I'm interested mostly on the front end side. And before the boot camp, I was um a multimedia designer, so I really wanted to merge design and technology together so that I can do majority of the things for development. Yeah. Okay, you're a multimedia designer. Okay. Hmm. All right, thanks very much. Okay, great. Uh, I got a couple more to go. Uh, oh, three, three, four more. Okay, Carl. Hello, um, my name is Kyle. I am currently working in a startup and I'm building um, digital products for travelers to okay. stay connected with people who matter to them. Uh, build travel products. Okay, okay. And... Uh, what do you want to do next? Um, okay. I mean, I just joined, not just joined, I've been here for about eight months or so. Um, yeah, I'm actually here because like, um, I'm involved in the hiring process for other developers. Although we're not currently hiring because of the economy, but yeah, just wanted to look and see what's happening in the market right now. Okay, all right. Okay, thanks. Uh, how about uh, Joey? Hey guys, uh, Joey here. I'm currently working for Deloitte as a IT consultant, mainly doing for um, SaaS implementation. Um, also just started out in the software industry last year, about September, joined the bootcamp there. 
uh, did some short-term work for a web development company as well, building apps for about two months, and I got this opportunity here. So uh, yeah, so I've been working for Deloitte for the past two months also, and just mainly here just to check out the industry here, and actually pretty interested to know um, how, how do you actually do freelance um, while working, let's say, like a full-time job. So just wanted to ask that. Thanks. <laughs> okay. I don't know, but uh, people who work for the big four, uh, I hear no time to do freelancing because they work long hours. But <laughs> uh, maybe there's some way, I don't know. Uh, let's get to know each other a little bit more. Uh, can't answer that question so soon. Uh, okay, thanks very much. How about DW? Mm, very mysterious. I need to know what DW means. Uh, ah, Dylan. Okay. Right. Okay, student. Okay, comment. All right. Explain the background. I'm here to observe the session. I couldn't find internship. Okay. All right. Ken, thanks, Dylan. So you are still um still studying. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, and then last one, I think, should be Keen. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Keen. I'm currently studying computer science in uh, university. And um, uh, I'm doing a part-time job uh, for uh, one of the research centers in uh, my uni. And I'm looking for an internship uh, for the upcoming months, or either that or for the next summer internship. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, so I got a couple of students here. Um, have I missed out anybody? I hope not. Okay. Don't think I missed out. If there is, please uh, just uh, shout or something like that. Uh, yeah. Ping me on chat. Okay. So um, the reason why I make each other, you know, introduce ourselves is because uh, I always believe that networking is still by far the best way to find your next job okay uh we can apply for jobs and all that but uh networking is still uh by far the best way and i've uh, been through that myself and some of my former clients in the previous company have found jobs uh really through their networks um, so if you hear an opportunity that might fit any of uh, these uh any of you here please really just uh, reach out to the person and say, hey, I know someone who could use your skills and talent. So please do that, okay? Um, okay, let me just move on uh, in a bit right now, okay? So really, our goal today, um, I just got to know you guys. Uh, career coach, no, no magic bullet, doesn't have a crystal ball. Um, uh, even when I work with my tech futurist friend, he also say that I cannot predict the future, but I can give you a hint of what is to come. So... Um, so I think my goal today is just share some things that I know um, and uh, just clarify some stuff. Uh, clarity is very important before you make the first step uh, or your next step. So I think that's what we're going to do. And, uh, if, uh, uh, and if you think this is very helpful, we can go for uh, another one or two sessions. And I'll share that with you at the end of the session, my last slide, how we can move forward uh, if, there's, if there is some interest to move forward. Okay. So... Uh, the expectation today is really just to clarify some stuff, uh, give you uh, some uh, framework to, to think about your next move. Okay, here we go. So, okay, so based on what I gather so far, uh, the responses I get is more than half. Uh, more than half of you are employed, uh, but the other half is looking for work. Okay. I got a question here for you guys to consider. Uh, you don't have to answer, but I want you to think about this. Uh, because that also plays an important uh, factor in uh, deciding what you want to do next. Um, if you have family uh, commitments, you know, uh, you could be married, have kids like me, or you, you have to take care of a parent or somebody else. Uh, basically, besides taking care of yourself, you take care of something else. Um, then that plays an important consideration uh, when you plan your next move because the financial runway... Uh, is rather important, especially in COVID uh, times. Uh, we, we really are uncertain uh, what's going to happen. So, but if you are single, uh, living with your parents, or you still have uh, a job, 
you know, that's fine. And that's a good position to be in right now so that you can take your time to really explore uh, what you want to do next. Okay. So some of the skill sets that you guys have said you have, uh, the most popular are the top three and top three. Uh, and then uh, uh, some I've never heard before below. So, but I think uh, it's probably within the development uh, uh, space. Uh, so these are uh, good technologies to have. Um, and then the next one is that 70% uh, of you here uh, have uh, less than one year of coding programming uh, experience. Uh, I'm not sure if that is uh, totally true because I was a little bit surprised uh, uh, that uh, quite a number of you uh, have less than one year, but maybe because it's a junior dev community, community, right? So I should I should actually expect that. Um, but some of you are quite uh, experienced. You guys have more than four or five years experience uh, in 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 this skill skill set. Um, can I can I and okay? So I don't have to ask that question. How many of you are below thirty five? I'm from the way you sounded and what you tell me. Uh, I think uh, most of you will be below the age of 35, right? Some of you are still in school. Some of you guys are starting out. So you are still fairly young in the first half of your career. And with the exception of a couple of you uh, here, uh, you're past 35. Okay. Okay. So this is what I gather from you, right? I try to make sense of what I, I, I read. Uh, so please, hands up. And raise your hand if you if you or you raise your hand if you think that I I have not uh, got it right. Uh, I've summarized them. Uh, some of you are working on interesting projects. You know, uh, I like the first one. Recognize emotions based on your facial expression from a video feed, and recommend you a song accordingly. Wow. Okay. Uh, and then we've got more industrial type one. You know, uh, mechanical fault detection dashboard and all that. Um, uh, training app. I'll be interested in that. You know, uh, because I'm a trainer as well. Um, and some of you are still learning or building your portfolio. Uh, some of you are self-taught, doing your own projects, uh, tinkering and experimenting with things. Okay, so that's a good thing so far, right? Um, okay, and uh, you guys have expressed uh, some concerns or issues uh, or just maybe just have thoughts about uh, uh, what's going to happen next. And uh, and I've, I just basically sum it up in three sections, lah, right? So... Uh, most of you are seeking some form of career change or career direction, so you need some clarity. Uh, some are thinking of, uh, you know, uh, what should you do to stay employable. Uh, some thinking of, con you know, thinking of a career switch, but you you think that you lack some uh, lack the skills, uh, in order for you to do the switch. Uh, some wants to get the next job opportunity uh, uh, in in COVID nineteen uh, times. Uh, some say there's lack of growth. I don't know what that means. It could either mean you lack of growth in your current job or is it there's lack of growth in the job market, right? Uh, and, and employability skills. Some, I like this one. Some feel that you are not learning fast enough. Uh, some things that uh, they are not learning anything in the job. So you've got a wide spectrum. Uh, some felt that you know, you're not good enough. And then on the other spectrum, some are sick and tired of uh, constant upgrading and learning new technologies, right? Uh, so we got a, a, a wide, diverse group of people here. And some would like to be in the middle and say, that, okay, how can I learn and retain knowledge and apply what we learn in our jobs? Uh, definitely, we need to apply what we learn, right? Um, and then uh, other questions I get, which may be a little bit out of uh, the scope today. But anyways, is freelancing sustainable, okay? Uh, and someone put lack of young talents interested in coding. Hmm. So uh, it looks like you're an educator or something. Uh, and uh, some, of, some of you seem to have grievance. You know, how to deal with politics in the office. <laughs> that one, uh, we need a separate Zoom session, six hours, we can talk, you know. <laughs> All right. And what are your next plans or some ideas of what you, wa what you want to do, right? Uh, so I, there are, again, three categories, but broadly, there are, there are two uh, in uh, major ones, which is uh, people seeking change. Uh, you want to find jobs in other companies or industries. Get hold of your first job or continue to find jobs or maybe find a gig. Okay, so this is what I gather. And then uh, from the skills part, I think uh, most of you are trying to improve your skills, uh, refine your skills, uh, learn new ones, some attended boot camps and all that. 
Uh, those are good things to do. Uh, some want to join an IMDA program. I used to be from IMDA. Actually, it's formerly IDA. Uh, now they changed name IMDA. Uh, want to participate in a PCP program or a, or the TPP TIPP bootcamp? Okay. Uh, explore technology in other domains to get a breadth of knowledge. Uh, that's good. Uh, and this one, a slightly different, uh, improve interview skills. Okay. So that one, I run a separate pro bono session. Maybe next time you all can uh, join in because interview skills are rather important. Uh. Okay. And uh, and I think this comes from the same same person. Uh, attract young talent. Okay. So. Okay, I ask you also what kind of products, customers, or industry you might be interested in working in. So uh, uh, I get a whole wide range of interesting answers. I'm not going to read all of them. You can see uh, for yourself. Some want to work for big companies like Facebook, Google. Uh, some wants to work with, in uh, healthcare, IT, FMB. Uh, some wants to create interesting products. Uh, you know, some wants to help businesses reach out to customers easily. Um, and, uh, and basically just uh, uh, how, to, how to get uh, entry-level experience, right? So I think these are all good things to have. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer. These are just good opportunities to do. It's just a matter of um, uh, aligning your goals and interests uh, to what's happening out there right now. And so we'll talk about that later. Okay, so let me share with you. So how I normally do things uh, um, is I'm not going to do it in a lecture style and, and all that. Uh, I usually like to share my thoughts on some things and actually indirectly or directly I would have answered your questions, right? Because there's so many questions, so many uh, diverse thoughts and, uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, interests here. So uh, I hope that when I share some stuff, you can get the answer. Um, if not, again, no, you know, just, just raise your hand. You can stop me any time. So, but I just want to bring you the big picture first. Uh, because some of the questions that I hear from you um, uh, shows me that um, uh, you need certain clarity. <coughs> so, and uh, I, I don't have the, I don't have the, also the full clarity, but I think I met enough people and uh, done a lot of stuff uh, and seen other people uh, that I, I can uh, gather from their experience and share them with you, right? So, so what other people are going through themselves that uh, hopefully can shed some light for you. Okay, so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm older than most of you here, uh, except a few, few, of, few of you. Um, and uh, I call it that our past economy, uh, as well as present economy, uh, or, I, or, or what I like to call it our parents' generation. Uh, our parents' generation is where the Singapore industrialized really very quickly. And, and uh, it is just uh, uh, a very uh, straightforward, chong kind of uh, uh, growth path, right? The trajectory is pretty much uh, on the upward most of the time, right? So everything was actually quite predictable. Uh, it's very performance driven. You just do your job. You 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 will get promoted. You 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 just climb the corporate ladder, your career ladder, right? Um, and I, I liken it to, to, to dragon boat racing. Uh. Uh, no offense if any of you here are dragon boat uh, racers or you know, athletes here. I, I, I'm not offending you or anything. I'm not trying to offend you, but I'm just trying to use analogy that in the past, it was rather uh, uh, straightforward. You know, uh, dragon boat just go in a straight line. Waters must be calm. Uh, the, the boat is shaped in, in, in a way that is, is meant for efficiency and speed. And, you, and most importantly, you just need one skill. And then there'll be a guy at the back to steer. And in the front, there's someone beating the drum, right? It's probably your boss or something like that, right? Or the government trying to tell you to work harder and all that. Uh, and then you just need one, one skill. And, and actually, you know, it's quite predictable uh, uh, because in this race, it's all about strength and speed, right? So from the moment the gun sound, you, you sort of know who will win. Uh, in the first few seconds, you will know because the one that is ahead, if he keeps doing it, uh, you end up uh, uh, finishing uh, first. And the uh, finishing line, you can also see, right? And, uh, and, and another thing is that uh, in Dragon Ball Race, you, know, you, you don't come into my lane, I don't come into your lane, right? Each have their own lane, right? Uh, so, so, you know, uh, everything has its controlled environment. It, this is what I feel, okay? So if you liken it to your career, uh, you just need one skill, one role, right? Uh, and and uh, you, you pretty much can survive. That, that is a good old days. 
right? Uh, and and career 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 choices are very much uh, uh, limited lah uh, in the in the past because you know as we industrialize, the government has certain sectors uh, that they depend on and they produce uh, 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 graduates that can immediately fit into the workforce. <clears throat> Today is different lah. Uh. Today, our economy is going through changes. Uh, uh, the landscape is different, and the future is what uh, one of my uh, what one of my, uh, my training partner, the futurist, he says it's a divuca environment. Divuca stands for disruptive, exponential, volatile, uncertain, uh, complex, and ambiguous. Divuca, right? You heard of vuca, but he added b and e, right? Uh, divuca environment, right? Um, and I liken it to a, a, a yacht race. Right, uh, stormy waters. Stormy waters. Everybody have to work together. There's no much of a leader actually. Everyone is multi-skilled. You you have to adjust your your sales. Uh, you don't even know where your competitors competitors are. They're all over the place. You know they can eat in your lane. You can eat in their lane. Uh, and uh, what's what, what's wonderful about about yacht race is that uh, they take advantage of of uh, of where the wind blows. Right, and you can even be last, but if you navigate well, you navigate skillfully, uh, you can end up being first, right? And don't and make sure you don't capsize along the way, right? And um, and uh, and you can see that uh, uh, things don't look very streamlined uh, in, in, in a yacht race like that, right? So this, as far as what I observe, right? So if any of you are yacht racers and I'm wrong, please <laughs> shout out, okay? And so therefore, it requires a multi-skill, uh, 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 multi-skill, multi-role. Uh, uh, type of, pers- of of professional to, to work in today's uh, uh, job market, right? So so some of you have 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 seen right from 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 the what you have submitted in the forms. You guys have uh, picked up a lot of uh, programming languages and 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 all that. So those are great. So you guys know a bunch of technologies and uh, uh, you know expose a lot of things on the internet. So great. Some of you are even working in the startup sector. So you are really at the forefront of change. So that's a good thing, right? Uh, very different from uh, even my time when I was starting work. Very different. Okay. Um, so the big question that I try to address in our short time together today, uh, and hopefully that will address most of your questions. If if not, we can always leave it to the end of it uh, for Q and A. Um, the big question today we're going to ask: Are you employable in today's Divoca market? <clears throat> right. The the word Divoca. Right. The, so are we employable in today's market? Right. So what what are the factors uh, involved? Uh, that 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 will help us get our uh, uh, next job, you know, uh, and and make sure that you know we, we stay uh, 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 relevant in our careers, right? So so are we employable in today's market, and how prepared are we, right? So let me just define a few terminology so that we can we can move forward, right? Employability, uh, basically when we talk about employability, and uh, you read that word a lot more in in the news in the news. Right. Uh, basically, it just refers to the attribute of a person that makes a person able to gain and maintain employment. Simply put, in my own definition, it's a mixture of skills, abilities, and personal qualities that you have that sets you apart from others in a job market. This keeps you employable. Right. So, uh, it's a unique mix of skills, abilities, and qualities, and this is something that I would like to focus on in the next few slides. Okay. So I'm going to stop, pause here right now and I'm going to ask you a few things, uh, ask you this question. I'm going to jot down a few things, right? What are some qualities that employers are looking for, right? Maybe I'll just ask three person, uh, what are the qualities that employers are looking for? Uh, can I just uh, randomly arrow, uh, uh, maybe first one, uh, arrow Max, uh, since he's, uh, he didn't get to in, introduce himself later. Max, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, okay. So the first thing probably will be in terms of attitude. Uh, attitude okay yeah. Yeah. okay how about anyone else uh uh i see i, I okay i see the name denise uh, i guess relevant skills to what the employee is looking for skills okay set. okay relevant skill sets okay maybe one last person let me just search the list uh Okay, William, because he has the most cheerful uh, profile picture, so can I arrow? Uh, sorry, what's the question? 
Question is, what are the quality? What are some qualities that employers are looking for? Has anyone said, uh, can get stuff done? Can get stuff done. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, not yet. Uh, but that's a very good one, right? Can get stuff done. Okay, I'm sure you you guys have uh, 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 more or less have uh, similar thoughts uh, uh, with these three guys, uh, these three person that just shared. Um, and of course, there are many qualities you can name, right? Um, but I just sum it up to three things uh, um, that uh, should encompass uh, most of the qualities that employers do look for. Uh, and I just, uh, let me just quickly just show you all the three. And I really want to explain this really well because uh, career coaches like to explain this really well uh, in, in helping the job seeker find their next uh, job. Um, yeah, there are just three C's that basically covers a lot of what the employers look for. They, of course, there are many more, but I think primarily if we can address these three, uh, you can get your job. Okay, no matter what, what times, COVID-19 or whatever, COVID-21, COVID-92, whatever, right? Uh, focus on these three, right? So many of you are very, still very young in your careers. Uh, and uh, this is now a good time to develop other areas that you probably could not have time to develop in the past, right? On top of what you're already doing, okay? Um, character, competence, and chemistry. Let me just go and uh, explain each and one of them quickly uh, for you. Okay. In my experience and those of my colleagues, uh, ex-colleagues and, and, and uh, employers that I know, um, I've come across good and bad employers, uh, right? Uh, and downright terrible ones uh, as well. Um, but so far, I, I, in, uh, I had a fortune, uh, I, I'm fortunate to work for a couple of good employers and, uh, and, uh, and I'm, I'm very glad to work for, for them. Uh, a good employer hires for attitude and character, not just for talent and skills, right? Uh, skill sets, you can easily just get, get it in a boot camp. You can always go back to school. You can learn online. Talent is something that God, given, God gives to you, whatever that talent is. Um, but attitude and character is something that needs to be molded through a process. And this is something that cannot be underestimated in your job search, right? Um, People don't hire a, VC, uh, a CV. They don't hire a piece of paper. They hire people they like and trust. This is one of the most important things that I need you to know when you're interviewing for a job, uh, when you're networking with people, uh, 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 finding out about industry, whatever it is, uh, people actually hire people that they like and trust, right? If really they don't like you for something, you're not going to get hired, no matter how competent you are. And if they cannot trust you to do a job, you're not going to get hired. So how do you dem demonstrate uh, likability, and most important, how do you make people trust you, right? How do you develop that attribute that people want? Hey, I don't think we can cover that today, but it's something uh, food for thought. Um, then I would like to rephrase that into, you know, into this question. What kind, what kind of person do you want to grow into professionally and personally, right? Uh, some of you may not be working. Some of you are working, contemplating a switch. Um, besides growing professionally and climbing the corporate ladder or whatever, you know, fulfilling your, your aspirations. Uh, think also about the kind of person that you want to grow into, right? Both professionally and personally as well, right? Um, and because this is what uh, you'll be known throughout for your career, right? Uh, you may think career, some of you are young, still got a long way to go, but actually, you, I mean, I come that, I come that journey. Close, close your eyes and then 20 years have passed, right? Um, so you want to start building your reputation now when you're still young, right? Uh, and not later. And I like what Warren, Warren Buffet says, uh, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to just ruin it. If you think about that, you do things differently, right? So that should factor in when you think about your next career move, right? I hope I'm getting, making some sense here. Uh, if not, please again, uh, 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 raise your hand and all that, right? Um, so, character, a good employer hires for attitude and character, not just talent and skills. So, remember when you're out networking, getting a job, applying for a job, uh, be sure to highlight uh, uh, more than just your talent and skills. Um, 
I'd like to, to, to bring it down further. Uh, uh, the next one, uh, competence. I just uh, call it cash, right? Um, competence is something that, you know, definitely you must have or else people won't hire you. I mean, you, either you can do the job or cannot do the job, right? So after character, they're going to assess. If I give you this job today, can you do it, right? And how, how they know you do it is hopefully one of these uh, or four of these things are. Uh, Right, knowledge, skills, attitude, habits, right? Uh, knowledge we all have. We all go to school. We can pick it up easily. Uh, we are some of us are even industry experts by now, right? Um, skills we have learned them. It's a learned ability. Skills are learned abilities. They are different from talents. Talents are natural abilities, right? Uh, skills are learned ability, and so things that you picked up in your boot camp, things you picked up in your school, right? Uh, to be able to perform a task and all that, right? So coding is one skill. Right, uh, we talk about attitudes. Attitude is defined as something that you, uh, 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 what you feel or believe or values or motivation about something. So, for example, a simple one could be doing your best. Right, my attitude towards work is I want to do my best. Right, another one could be uh, 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 I got friends who is a very meticulous one. Right, I got I got ex colleague from government. Right, she's known for uh, not uh, not leaving any stones unturned kind of thing. Right. Uh, uh, that is the attitude towards work. Uh, she'll get everything done right down to the dot. Right? Attitude is what, what people look for and appreciate. Habits, I think a lot of people overlook this part. Um, uh, it's basically a routine. right? Uh, if you don't set yourself in a routine, into a habit, uh, people can uh, notice that quite easily. Right? Um, and of course, unfortunately, when at the interview room, when you're interviewing for a next job, uh, your employers are taking a risk on you. They won't be able to know your attitude or habits. They'll try their best, right? And then when they hire, then they will know whether they make a mistake or not, lah, right? Um, but don't leave it to chance. Uh, you know, uh, work on some of uh, uh, some of these good habits uh, that you have, right? Um, it can be a whole wide range of things, right? So cash. So if you want to earn cash, you must remember cash. Okay, feel free to stop me if you want to add anything else, disagree, whatever, share. It's, I'm, I'm not the guru here, right? Uh, all these things I learned from others, uh, from my own experience and all that, and I share. Okay? And the last one I think is also rather important. Uh, you may have character and competence, uh, but chemistry is something that you cannot, be, cannot overlook. And again, a good employer will consider these factors. Um, are you coachable or teachable? We may have tremendous talent. Uh, we, are, we may be damn good in doing something, but uh, I've come across employers, because when I was a recruiter, I've got employers who tell me that, you know, I, I look past the CV. I want to know whether that person that you are presenting before me, is the person coachable or not? Wow. So as a recruiter, I also have a hard time to, to, to give the answer because, you know, I have to, how, how do I know whether that person is coachable, right? right? But I have to do my best. And uh, that is actually a very good question. You know that uh, this employer uh, asked. You know, I, I is this candidate of yours that you're presenting to me? Is he or she coachable, right? Is he teachable, right? If it cannot, uh, I don't hire. No matter how talented he or she is, right? Uh, the employer will also ask, do you have the potential to grow and contribute to my organization, right? Uh, again, they will never know, but this is one thing that they really want to find out. And how you can present that and demonstrate that is really have someone vouch for your abilities, right? You have to demonstrate that. Uh, and and uh, they also want to know how well can you work with others? And the last one is one my, my boss actually asked, you know, uh, she asked point blank, right? Uh, you know, my, my boss is a uh, female and uh, she's, uh, she, yet yeah, she's a point blank person. She actually asked a candidate, you know, I've sat in and heard her say, you know, how can I manage you? Well, I think the candidate also stumped. Right. So how can I manage you? If your boss find it hard to manage you, uh, he, he's not gonna he's not gonna hire you, right? Because he has to spend time uh, fixing a problem, right? When he's got many other problems to fix. So I, you know, there are many more uh, I, I can share with you, but uh, I think uh, this would be four good uh, questions that we have to think about. Uh, when you walk into a job, it's not you bring whatever you have to the job, you know. Uh, uh, are you able to form synergies with the people that you work, right? Are you aligned with the culture of the company, right? So some of you here have worked with startups before, right? So, uh, or you're currently working in a startup. So culture matters uh, in a startup a lot. Um, so 
uh, yeah, so this is something that you want to think about. Okay. Okay, before I go there, um, let me just do a time check, 9.30. Okay, good to, to, to we are reaching the end. Can, can, I, can, can someone share, how do you demonstrate those qualities when you go for a job interview? How do you demonstrate character in an interview? Anyone? Maybe some of you have hired people before. So how do you pick the person? Um, I mean, I, was, I wasn't the hiring manager, but I was in the interview yeah. before. And that was really just for an uh, intern. But what we like to do is that we ask them to describe a personal project that they have done. So this is very coding specific. So uh, then after that, we will question their choices. Yeah. So actually from this uh, experience, right, we usually get a glimpse to see whether uh, it is a person who make informed choice in a sense that uh, he makes, he thinks through about his choice. Uh, so that's like a thoughtfulness kind of thing. And the mm -hmm. other thing that we like to do is that we like to ask, uh, if you were to start all over again, will you? What are the different choices that you will make? Okay. So, I mean, that also highlights a technicality side. That highlights a willingness to learn. That also right. highlights a point where whether he's humble enough to say that, hey, actually I did this wrong, or right. this could have done better. So, uh, but this is a very specific question. Now. I'm not sure whether there are any other way actually. But yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks for sharing. Very good point. Uh, you give, present him a situation and then ask him to talk through it and go through the process, uh, try to pick his uh, thoughts. Anyone else have something to add? Uh, Benny, would you like to check, uh, speak about it? Because you say there's something as well. Uh, Mohamed, would you be interested as well? Uh, Muhammad says beyond time, take informal discussions, not in a closed room, but maybe a, a cup of coffee. A lot of things can happen over coffee. Give uh, other person comfortable, comfortably to express. Okay. 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 Benny asks how I can help them. Okay. So a lot of, a lot of these are actually quite situational, right? Um, a lot of employers like to use uh, um, situational interview questions. You can always easily Google and see a whole bunch of them, right? Um, they want to know your thoughts and what actions you will take when encountered with a certain situation, right? And uh, in the, I, I run a, uh, another session, a pro bono session on interview skills, and we use this technique. You can you can easily Google them, right? It's, it's very easy, but the problem is very hard to do. It's called the STAR technique, right? So it's a situation, task, action, and results. Situation, task, action, results, right? So they'll ask you questions like, okay, in this situation, can you share with me what you have done and what happened in the end, right? So situation you share and then describe what was the target or the task that you were asked to do, right? Uh, and then what action you took to solve that problem and then what was the result in the end? Did it meet the target or did not, right? And how did you overcome? If you did not do it, uh, what happened? So if, and if you did it, how did you overcome it? So they want to know all these things, right? And from there, they're trying to get some assurance that uh, you're of a certain character, okay? And competence, that one's quite easy, right? If you, are, if you are a coder, right? They'll just send you for a coding test. You can make, you pass, you get the job. You don't pass, don't get a job. So. Testing is, 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 is rather easy, but uh, 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 checking back on, on the character is, is, is a bit hard. And uh, that's where you actually have to set yourself apart in your next job search uh, uh, to highlight who you really are. They really want to know what you, who you are and what you do, right? Even outside of work, right? Uh, my, 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 my Xbox and the recruiting uh, company like to ask people, what do you do outside of work? 
uh, you know, when I first joined that, I, I find it a weird question, but I start to realize why, why she's interested to know. Um, and uh, because that, asks, that gives her an additional aspect, uh, perspective on that person or herself. Uh, and, then, and then she's, she's comfortable enough to, to, to highlight the, uh, that person's CV to the, uh, to the uh, potential employer. Right, uh, and uh, she have lots of coffee uh, chats and try and uh, ask a lot of questions and all that. So you must be prepared to give uh, uh, the right facts and figures, tell the story and use uh, the star technique to do it. Uh, it's a very simple technique, but it takes a lot of practice, right? Uh, you actually have to internalize, remember a lot of things and let it come natu naturally to you. So, um, so, so situational uh, behavioral type uh, questions uh, you, you'll be asked uh, during interviews and, and, and all that, right? Um, how about, okay, so, so how do you demonstrate qualities of competence? So that one, I, I said that, you know, uh, that one easy that, you know, uh, you, you have got, you, especially for technical roles, uh, uh, you guys and I, technical role, that one's easy. People just ask you to show your, what you have done, show your results, uh, get someone to testify. That's, that's great. All right, so that's called competence, right? How about chemistry? How do you demonstrate chemistry to your future employers, right? Or to your potential hirers? Anyone? Anyone here want to share? How do you I, I guess looking up the the values that the company aligns themselves with and uh, exhibit showing some way of exhibiting them uh, as a person. Okay, okay, all right. So you want to make sure that you are aligned to the company uh, values, right? And uh, and even better, uh, not just a company values, the founders value. If you are working for a company, working for a startup, you like to know what the founder values and all that. Um, when, when I was a recruiter, uh, some of the uh, uh, more seasoned job seeker would ask me, uh, how is a founder like? Right? Because they want to know whether if I join this company, uh, can I work with the boss? Can I work with the founder? Right? Uh, does the founder have an attitude problem himself? Does the founder, uh, uh, is the founder himself coachable? Right, him, you know, uh, if if the founder is stubborn or or, or have some some problem, right, uh, uh, this guy is not going to work for him, right. So, um, you also want to have chemistry with uh, with uh, not just your immediate boss, your big boss also. Um, what are the ways that you can demonstrate chemistry that you're, that you're able to work with people? Anybody? Uh, for my end, probably uh, usually in terms of how their social skills like, so how they talk to you, their body language, tones, and how, how you ask questions are interested in them. Most of the soft skills that I have. Uh, you know, in, uh, thanks, Max. Uh, in my previous role uh, in, uh, in a job placement agency, we are a partner of WSG. Uh, workforce Singapore, and uh, we sort of do the receptionist test. I'm not sure if you know what's a receptionist test, but anyways, uh, when my job seekers come to me for help in their job search, uh, um, especially on the first visit, uh, it's almost likened to an interview, right? So uh, my receptionist is actually interviewing him already, right? Uh, you'll be surprised that people who walk into my office, right, see my receptionist, uh, uh, you know, they are, they don't smile. They are also rude to my receptionist. Uh, some of them yell at her and we have one or two cases, you know, my receptionist got yelled at and all that. And all this happened prior to me as a coach meeting them, right? So my receptionist will be very fed up and then she'll send me a secret text and saying that beware of this guy. He's coming in 15 minutes time to see you. Uh, and he's waiting outside right now. This guy is a no, no. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, Chin Hui says, in short, be nice, right? So I always tell people, uh, uh, your, interviews, the, your interview starts uh, the moment you walk into the office. 
if not not when not it doesn't start when you are in the interview room. It 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 starts when you are at the doorstep of the company, right? So uh, it, everything happens uh, from there, right? Some even say starts from the lift because you never know you might be meeting your future boss in the lift, right? Uh, I actually met my future boss, believe it or not, uh, a long time ago in a dot com bus in the year two thousand and one, in the dot com bus uh, bus at time. Uh, there was this, there's this very popular concept called the pink slip party. So in US, pink slip means uh, means you are asked to go lah, goodbye. And so some some savvy entrepreneur brought the concept of a pink slip party to Singapore, and uh, they just organized a hiring, you know, a job fair, uh, for hiring it in a pub. So people come over and drink beer, and you meet your potential employers. And uh, and I went into over to one of the booths, and I spoke to this lady. And I thought she's a HR person, so I chit chat, share my views about stuff, this and that, handed in my application form. And uh, two weeks later, when I was called up for interview, uh, I I went there and I realized that the person I was speaking to was actually the center director. So she's uh, the ultimate big boss, you know. And I was so surprised, right? So the interview started in the in in a in a pub in River Valley, uh, two weeks before uh, I even went for the actual interview. So. Uh, your, so you have to be presentable, presentable at all times. Okay, now one way to 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 demonstrate chemistry uh, is actually indirect way. Uh, uh, frankly, in today's job market, uh, uh, referrals work best. Uh, if you have someone that can vouch for your abilities, your character, um, <clears throat> uh, that 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 helps way much more than if you. Way works way better than a beautiful CV or the LinkedIn profile. Or of course, those are very important. Your 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 CV, your LinkedIn profile, and all that. Yeah, very important. But uh, nothing beats having someone to say that. Hey, uh, you know, uh, boss, there's this person here. I think you should really uh, take a look and uh, and hire him or her if possible because he will be a great addition or great asset to our company, right? Um, so nothing beats having someone to vouch for you. So the uh, so one of the best ways is always to have a good network of people uh, who can vouch for your abilities, like demonstrate that you can contribute to something, right? Uh, I'm not sure if you if you if you know these people. I met my I met them throughout all my career. They're people who are always the takers, never the givers, right? Uh, when they come for a community meetup or 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 even in the office, right? There are people who are takers. They never give one. They will take first. They will never give. Right, so their reputation people know already. So in their next job, you know, none of us would like to vouch for this guy for his next job, right? Uh, got good, got good low bang. Uh, we won't recommend him, or we'll, we'll 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 recommend to our other friends, right? Um, so learn to be a giver as well. Um, contribute uh where you can because the only way you 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 uh you demonstrate uh some of your personality and you know, all is where is you let people know you and uh, and 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 uh, and uh, so. It could be in the form of teaching somebody or participating in a community event, volunteering for something, uh, doing a project together. Uh, you know, I've got a few of my ex-clients. These are all the, like I mentioned before, these are all my mid-career, 40, 50-year-old job seekers. Um, uh, they found their jobs when they are taking a course, right? So I remember this lady, she's a, she's a, she was, she's a former marketing person and she wanted to do a career switch to counseling. So, uh, and it's really tough because I, I told her, wow, from marketing to counseling, uh, it's a world apart, you know, I also don't know how to help you, uh, but, uh, but uh, try and get, uh, uh, get to know people, right? And, um, and she's taking her diploma in counseling course for one year and uh, in, in her class, uh, uh, there are several people, obviously, they are, they are from the VWO, just from the social uh, sector and all that. And uh, they work on projects, and you know, uh, working on a course together. Uh, sorry, studying a course together, you will get to work on projects. So, uh, some of her project teammates are very comfortable with her. And when there was a job opening in in their company, in their organization, they actually put forth her CV for her. And a long story short, she got hired. So sometimes when you are taking a course, uh, it's not about learning new knowledge and that, or, and all that. I mean, of, of course that's important, but it's it's the people that you meet in class, right? What's their impression of you? And like I said, people hire people. That they like and trust, right? Uh, on top of your uh, of your skill sets and all that, so people like to hire people that they like and trust. So uh, find all kinds of way to uh, demonstrate that you are who you are and what you stand for, right? So that speaks louder than your CV or LinkedIn profile. 
Anybody have else have interesting stories to share, right? Anybody else? Uh, why not? So um, I, I think maybe I can uh, comment a little bit about the chemistry aspect of, uh, of doing interviews. Yeah. Um, so it's tangentially related, but uh, generally it helps uh, to actually prepare beforehand uh, and un to actually understand the company, uh, both in terms of its strengths and, and its weaknesses before you actually uh, come for interviews. So uh, on, on my side of the interviewing table where, uh, where I'm the interviewer, one of the things that we kind of look out for at Open Government Products is whether the person actually, uh, actually cares about public service. Yeah. And uh, that's, uh, so, so just to illustrate, like often when we, are, when, we, when we grill our candidates, one of the things we will ask them is about is like, uh, are there any interesting public, sec uh, public sector problems that you think uh, are worth addressing? And right. uh, usually the ones who do well tend to be the, uh, people who have actually spent quite some time thinking about uh, some of the things that they kind of want, uh, want to do. Uh, and it's also quite, um, uh, it's, it's also quite uh, relatively easy to actually spot the ones who have actually uh, prepared like maybe two, uh, two weeks before the interview and those who have actually spent a long time uh, thinking, uh, thinking about these things. So um, right. yeah, uh, so I, I, guess, um, I guess the point here is that uh, it definitely, uh, Aids uh, the interviewer uh, at the very least uh, to, uh, to 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 know that he uh, that you know uh, the candidate has actually uh, taken time to understand what uh, what he's what he's signing up for, and um, you know, that's that's always very helpful when it when it comes to uh, when it comes to like uh, interviewing. Right, right. Well, definitely, yeah. So I think preparation is uh, uh, very important. I think you brought up a good point. Um, uh, the good question asked that do. Does a person show that he really, uh, he or she really care, right, about the work, about the problem that they're going to be solving, right? Are they passionate about that? Um, uh, it, it brings to mind uh, one of the the things that my my ex boss in the recruitment company says is that um, uh, she wants to know whether you are all in into the job, right? Uh, you bring your whole self to the job. You know, you do you really, uh, uh, you know, care about the problem? Uh, do you uh, see the company's mission as your own mission as well, right? Um, so that will make you, as a job seeker, be more selective in who you pick, right? Uh, in a in the old good old times, uh, like I said, in our parents' generation, uh, it's a it's a spray spray and pray la, I, uh, just send my CV, just send to a thousand organizations, and then just pray that one or two will call me for interview, and then I'll most likely get the job kind of thing. Well, those are the good old days. Uh, spray and pray, and something will come up. Today, you cannot spray and pray already, right? Uh, you spray but and pray and nothing will happen, right? So a lot of time it's really through um, uh, through really uh, being selective about what you want to do and all that. And that's, that, 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 that brings to the question of a career uh, directions and clarity, right? Which I think I'll address next. Anyone else? Um, yeah, maybe if I can sharpen my, uh, my, my last comment a little bit more. So yeah. um, don't get me wrong. It's, yeah. uh, it's not that you have, uh, it's not that like every time you go for an interview, you basically have to like, like, uh, mark for the uh, mark for the interviews uh, to understand the company, right? It's it's perfectly fine to actually tell uh, to be honest with the interviewer and say, uh, yeah. uh, this just happens to be one of the jobs that I apply for. So long as uh, you know why you are applying for it. So uh, so typically when I when I go for interviews, uh, what I'll do is I'll be like, it just happens to be one of the jobs that I'm applying for. But if I decide to take up this offer, it's because so and uh, such and such and such. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so that that. Uh, gives the interviewer added confidence that like you have been doing your homework you have been like yeah. doing your research uh, you understand yeah. the, uh, the 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 pros and cons of like of each uh, of each job offer that you might be considering and so on so right yeah right okay great one thanks thanks so much um anybody else have something to add okay now if not uh, what i'm gonna do is uh go back okay wait i'm trying to fiddle with my zoom okay so we're gonna go back to this and to now go into the questions that some of you guys are um, gonna be asking, right? Um, I think this will be a good question to dwell on for the next uh, 10 minutes uh, before I just end off. Um, what are some of your plans or some of idea what you wanna do, right? Um, uh, you know, seeking change. Some of you are seeking employment, seeking change, uh, get your first job. Uh, uh, some of you are unemployed, continuing to find your Find your find your next opportunity, 
And uh, someone also asked me at the beginning, uh, do I stay five years or do I, uh, do I stay every two years and then, and then move along, right? Yeah, there, there's no magical answer. There's no five years or, or two years. Um, uh, I don't like to use a timeline to measure uh, my career progress uh, or dictate what I do. Um, timeline should not be the key factor. It can be one of factors, but I don't think uh, uh, it should be, you know, a, a major factor. I think I think more important you have you have to ask yourself is um, uh, what have you learned and contribute in those years that you are going to be working in an organization, right? Uh, I also have so, I saw someone's comment earlier, right? Uh, uh, back to this slide, right? Uh, the second section's employable skills, right? Someone is saying that they are not learning anything in the job. Well, if you're not learning anything in the job, uh, then perhaps either you ask your boss to give you a new job responsibility or you have to uh, move on to another job that allows you to learn. But remember, you, you, you don't just go there and learn. You have to go and contribute and make an impact. Uh, uh, some people can make an impact within two years. Some needs five. Right? It depends on what the job, uh, uh, job uh, requires of you. Um, if you are if you are not learning anything in in the job, uh, uh, it, it, there, there are two ways. Uh, e either you are not progressing or the company is not progressing, right? Uh, there are situations where I've I've unfortunately I got friends who are stuck in uh, not a day end job. Uh, their, their their type of jo roles probably can flourish elsewhere, but it's a company that is a that is not moving, right? So uh, it's all boils down to the founder, right? The, the founder is just happy and contented to. To, to do what they do and it's always been done this way uh, and uh, actually thank goodness there's COVID-19 because uh, I, I, I joke with my friends nowadays that COVID-19 should be should be voted the CEO of the century for leading digital transformation right everybody have to uh, go go digital now uh, whatever business you are in right so uh, COVID-19 should be given an award or something like that um, so uh, it forces everyone to change right um, uh, and, and go digital um, and uh, and and if you are not learning anything and, and uh, uh, on the job, you 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 gotta ask. Then what is it that you want to learn, right? Uh, if you cannot get it in your company, then uh, where else are you, are you gonna learn those those things? Um. Okay, let, let's go back to to this one first. Uh, you know, what are your next plans or ideas you want to do? Right, find finding jobs in other uh, companies, uh, industries. Get hold of my first job and all that. Um, I tie it back to this one, uh, career direction, right? better clarity for next steps, uh, staying employable, right? Uh, all this is all uh, part of this career direction part. So I, I explained earlier that uh, we're an economy where it's uh, pretty much the VUCA, right? Uh, there's, no, uh, uh, there's no clear, clear end uh, to all these things, right? Uh, who knows what's going to happen after COVID-19 is over or maybe it will not be over, right? Um, in my, in my class, which I run with uh, my, my partner, Charlie, um, we always preach this, this thing called the ambidextrous uh, uh, thinking, right? Uh, for, for those of you who may not know, uh, ambidextrous basically means you are uh, good with both hands, lah, right? Uh, you know, uh, you can write with both hands, you, you can draw with both hands. Uh, I got a classmate that can play badminton uh, with both hands and he's a national player, a former national player, right? Uh, ambidextrous, um, before COVID-19 happens, an ambidextrous approach means while you're in your job, you improve and explore as much as much as possible. You take on different tasks, you learn new things, you apply yourself, uh, and you improve uh, by taking on uh, uh, more job responsibility, tackle, tackle new challenges and all that. Uh, I just classify that under improving uh, but on the on on the on the other hand, at the same time, you will need to have uh, a a plan B, right? Uh, to prepare for your second job or second career, uh, or, or or basically your your next opportunity that comes along, right? So uh, what new things you have to learn? So I call it the innovate, right? Um, so in your current job, you improve, and at the same time, you are thinking of how can you innovate and uh, uh, do something in case you lose your first job. Right or your current job, right? You you lose your job and and what are you going to depend on? Um, 
a lot of my ex clients who are in their forties and fifties had tremendous careers. Uh, you you just unbelievable. You, you you couldn't believe them. They 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 are like CEOs of companies and and, and all that. Uh, but when retrenchment, you know, retrenchment and job market uh, start to turn bad uh, at the beginning of uh, 2016, 2017, right? And then now with COVID, everything just accelerates, right? So a lot of people were caught off guard uh, because they are like the dragon boat mentality. I just learned one skill. I do well in it. Uh, and uh, I never thought that I would get retrenched. I never thought that I would lose my job or my company restructure and all that. No fault of theirs. They are, they are, they are highly competent people, right? Uh, but they are competent in only one thing, right? Um, so I always advocate ha having an ambidex ambidextrous mindset uh, while you're in your job, you're improving uh, all the time, but you're also innovating and doing something new, cutting edge, uh, so that uh, you catch a trend, right? Um, so uh, let me just uh, uh, look at this. Uh, back to this one right? Uh, skills. Some of you have said that I want to develop a skill that I enjoy, right? And work remotely. Okay. Uh, some of you want to attend a software engineering bootcamp and build a portfolio. Currently, you're self-learning, full stack development and all that. Uh, attend course, keep learning new things uh, and, and join programs uh, and, and all that. So, so all these are, are great things. Um, uh, but but I, again, I tie it back to all these skills. Uh, uh, in the end, whatever pick you pick up, uh, I call them marketable skills, right? I always ask people, do you have marketable skills, right? Uh, marketable skills basically means do you have skills that employers want or the industry wants, right? Um, if you pick up good skills, but, uh, uh, but skills that don't meet uh, today's employers' uh, requirements, uh, it, it doesn't help, right? Um, so how do you know what employers want, right? How do you know um, that you have invested in the right skill sets, learning the new skill sets, right? You go Coursera for a few days, you go back to university for a year, I don't know. Uh, some maybe, you know, I got a friend who takes took the M MBA from, EMBA from INSEAD and, uh, you know, executive MBA, you know, and uh, he, he jokingly told me after I graduate, uh, you know, I, I totally, I spent a total of 150000 all in everything. And uh, till today, I still have not got my ROI, right? So, so, so I don't know. Uh, it's good to have. The MBA is good to have. It's a very, very well-branded uh, university. But uh, in his, in his uh, opinion, he didn't really get his ROI, right? Uh, so how do you want to invest your time? Well, I, I don't have a magic answer, but actually the writing's on the wall. Uh, you, 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 you. My, my partner, would, uh, my training partner will say that uh, there are four mega trends. And today, the four mega trends are just all intertwined connectedly, right? Uh, he's having a talk next week, so I should just send the link to you guys. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good. I'm not like him, right? He, he thinks on a different level. Right? There are four mega trends that we all need to look out for. And this should give you some clues for your next steps. Um, geopolitics, right? He mentions geopolitics, right? Uh, you know, he started with all the trade war and all that, right? Uh, and then uh, 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 climate change, right? Uh, uh, climate change, uh, geopolitics, climate change, uh, technology. Uh, technology uh, disrupts everything, right? Uh, uh, the way we work, live, and play, and everything. And uh, fourth one is, uh, gee, I can't remember. I, I'm, I'm sure if Max could remember. Um, but basically, these are some of the four mega trends. Oh, yeah, one more thing is the uh, demographics. Uh, the fourth thing is demographics. Right, and you cannot look at each of them as silos. Uh, they are all intertwined together, right? Uh, it, uh, one, and now the worst thing is everything happens all at once, and uh, uh, and uh, the world will just get more complex and ambiguous moving forward. Um, uh, then, then uh, the ambidextrous uh, strategy uh, uh, does it work? Yeah, it still works. Uh, we just put it in a different context, right? Uh, in COVID nineteen, the ambidextrous uh, strategy is you plan for the short term, but you also uh, look out for the long term, right? Uh, for some of you who could be financially strapped, uh, uh, you know, if, if you are single, you know, living with your parents and all that is, is, is great, but some of us could be, uh, 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 our income is really uh, impacted. So, uh, you know, do all you, you need to do for the, for the short term, 
right? Uh, if you take the right actions today, uh, uh, then in 18 months time, you know, 24 months time, uh, uh, your opportunities will present itself. So everything lies in what you, you, you do today. If you take the wrong step, uh, you, you know, you, you just go off a different path in the forest, right? So look at the scenarios that is uh, in front of you, right? Uh, uh, we, we, we need to look beyond uh, our jobs, uh, beyond the industry that we're in, and, and we look at the bigger picture. Many things have, uh, uh, have changed, right? Um, <clears throat> think about second and third order effects, right? Uh, if something happens today, right now, then what other industries will it impact? Uh, what, what is cause impact, uh, cause, uh, cause, uh, cause and effect of things? And then, then the third order, well, so what will happen after that also, right? It's like a domino thing. So, so if, if, if something happens today, then what's next and next and next, right? And try and peer as far, uh, far out as possible, right? And then take some of the steps you need to take today. Um, someone asked me, you know, so what happens after COVID-19? Uh, where are the emerging job opportunities? Uh, I told them there's, there's, there's no clear like, okay, this job, this industry, this and this. But everything lies in what you do today, right? So if you do some things today, 6, 12, 18 months down, you will start to see that, hey, actually the opportunity is starting to slowly emerge and uh, present itself before you. But if you take the wrong actions or don't take action or just continue business as usual, then you then 18 months later you 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 sort of like struggle still struggling lah, right and uh, I, I always like to challenge uh, 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 some of the coaches that I I, I, I help with and 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 uh, let's say today is 22nd May 2020 right I always challenge them lah. in 22nd on 22nd May 2021 imagine today is 22nd May 2021 uh, what will you be doing Will you still be doing the same thing as you are doing in 2020, or is different, right? Uh, so you don't really need to look be a futurist. Uh, futurists also cannot tell you the answer. You, you don't need to look five, ten years down. You just have to look 12, 18, 24 months down, uh, and then ask yourself: If today you are there now, and what, 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 what will you likely be doing, right? Okay. Any a, any thoughts so far? Have I addressed all your? Questions someone asked, how devastating could it be potentially to be make a wrong step in your Torah? Uh, uh, how devastating could it be if you make a wrong step in your career direction? Well, uh, if you take a big step uh, and then you fall, uh, that is quite devastating, right? So uh, I never advocate uh, a major career switch, right? Uh, Prior to all this COVID thing, right, all the career coaches like to share this thing. Oh, take a big step and plunge into it, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, so I've heard of many people who take the plunge and they didn't survive. So, uh, especially not in the Singapore context. So, uh, what I would sh uh, uh, just encourage you guys to do is uh, take small steps, uh, experiment steps, right? I mean, in, some of you are from the startup background, you know, right? So, experiment you do that in your careers as well. So uh, like what LinkedIn founder Reid Hoffman says, right? You, you treat yourself like a startup. Your career is like a startup, right? Uh, you, you, you remove yourself out from your career and then you look back in, right? And imagine you, your, your career is like a startup that you have to invest and manage and nurture and grow, right? Then you ask yourself, what products and services is my startup going to do? Who is my customer? How am I going to serve him or her, right? What, 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 what things do I have to learn or do to make my company relevant and profitable, right? So you, and so you adopt a startup mindset, you're experimenting, you expose yourself to new things, you are always talking to people, right? You are always validating some of the assumptions that you make, right? Uh, recently, I, 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 I was speaking to a, a young adult who is uh, working for one of the big four and he wants to make a big plunge right uh, he wants to go from consulting he's got a, he, he graduated from SMU in in accounting and he wants to make a big jump and to become a youth worker right he, he's very passionate about doing missions work and you know go to all the uh, you know 
poorer countries and help the youth and all that, you know. So he's one of those want to take big step, you know. But I, but I encourage him that you know, uh, I mean, given the current situation, not not so good to make that that jump. Uh, but more importantly, you should you should do a what I call what I call a low cost probe, right? Low cost probe, right? Some of you here, I'm not sure if you know that term, but low cost probe basically just do some probe fast and cheap to figure out whether your assumptions about your next move is going to be correct or not. So what I encourage, the first thing I just encourage him to do is quite simple. What else? If you want to switch to become a, a youth worker, right? Uh, the one, one of the easiest ways is just go on LinkedIn and you go and type in youth worker and you look at 10 profiles. And now when you study the history of that person, you know, the, you know of the 10 profiles, and how did he or she end up where she is today? What was her beginnings and how, what the journey that he or she went through and to get to, uh, to, to being a youth worker? That will give you some clue, clue of whether you, you would like to be in his or her position. But that's not good enough. You want to go a bit further. So you prepare a set of five questions, right? Uh, and go in LinkedIn to that person and send that five questions. Right. Uh, make sure it's a standard five questions like what triggered you to become a social worker, what are the challenges, what are the proudest achievements you have, uh, what skills are needed to become a youth worker, and lastly, uh, if you had to, if you had to give a piece of advice to someone who wants to be a youth worker, what do you need to do? So, what would that be? So, standard five questions. Go on LinkedIn, search for ten youth workers link into that person, send the five questions to them, right? If you send the 10 people, three people will respond. Two or one will give you a good answer, right? Then you find another 10, you ask the same question, you get another three response, and now you got six. After a while you do it, you sort of get the pattern. You sort of get the idea of what is it, right? And if you want to go even further, uh, which is what my, this, this guy has done. He he linked into that uh, person, uh, is a lady working as a youth worker in one of the organizations uh, locally, and then they are going to fix up the time on Zoom to go and talk about those five questions, right? So the cheapest way, low cost group is go and talk to the person who is in a job that you want, and find out from that person what it takes to get to to be in their shoes, right? Do I make any sense? Anyone has a better idea or a different idea? Could you repeat what those five questions are? Okay, tell you what, I'll write, I'll write it down, right? Okay, I have sent the five questions. Um, feel free to edit and amend, uh, and, uh, uh, but just along those lines, uh, you want to ask more questions, up to you, but I don't recommend more than eight, nine, because you're gonna, the other person will feel very annoyed. So um, if you do this and collect some data, uh, that's where you put your data uh, skills in, in place and, and figure out 
there's going to be a pattern to what these people will reply you. And then you can decide for yourself whether uh, uh, a particular career is something that you should uh, uh, go into. Or even a company. Sometimes you want to be in this particular industry, right? So you will find companies, people who work in this type of company who's, or who's, whose business is in a, in a particular nature, right? Let's say F and B, fast go, moving goods or something like that. Uh, then you ask five people, uh, sorry, five questions uh, similar uh, to, to 10 people who are from this industry, right? And then you get a response, right? Is this the kind of industry that you want to work in? Is this kind of industry that you enjoy or foresee yourself being it for a while, right? Um, is there anything else you, you would like to ask? Did I miss out? Let me ask, uh, let me look at the, the set of questions again. Okay, wait, uh, let me click. Yeah, so please feel free to ask uh, because uh, yeah. we are about 10.10. 10, so uh, just yeah. probably five more minutes. Will that be all right with you, Kenny? Okay, yeah, no problem. So somebody asked whether, I'll just address the, the, minor, uh, the, 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 the minor question in the other section, right? So is freelancing sustainable? Um, freelancing uh, it really all depends on what you do. Uh, like I said, it all ties back to your marketable skills, right? What employers or business owner wants from you? Um, if you have those skill sets uh, uh, and you're always staying abreast of things uh, at the forefront of uh, innovation, um, you'll always be, be in demand no matter, matter, no matter what crisis. Um, uh, some freelancing is, is just a matter of lifestyle uh, choice, right? Currently, me and a few other friends of mine, we are very happy to be freelancers. Uh, but not early in our careers, right? We really, we really need to work for people, right? In the past, we work for people. We just have to kowtow to your boss. Whether they ask you to do ridiculous things or not, you just have to do because at the time, you are building uh, your career, right? Uh, now we get to, we, now we have the luxury of picking and choosing who we want to work with, you know? Uh, if this project is not worthwhile doing, I, I, I will turn you down, you know? I get to do things that I like. But, that, but, but again, I, like I said, so everyone's background is very unique and different, right? So if, if, uh, if you are uh, uh, financially strapped, then of, of course, you have, to, you have to go and take on whatever jobs you do. Um, someone, I remember someone asked about showcasing your, 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 your portfolio and all that. Um, very important for you to, to showcase your skill sets, especially those, uh, 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 those people who code one, right? So, uh, so as, as I found out from some of my other friends who are, who are technical, you know, you should be earning badges on GitHub uh, as much as possible, right? So they say that this is one way that uh, employers will, you know, re really validate your skills. So, uh, so I don't know. So if, if, if it requires you to earn badges on GitHub, uh, uh, then go earn badges in GitHub, right? Anything to demonstrate that you are competent in what you say, right? Um, and, uh, um, it's uh, some, some things I can share with you is that, um, okay, so some of you, I don't know. I don't know whether you have this problem. If some of you have this uh, uh, issue or concern, you know, uh, maybe some of you are not having enough experience working on projects, right? Maybe you have learned a skill, but you don't have an opportunity to, 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 to practice those skills, right? Uh, so first one is very easy. Just ask, uh, uh, ask around in your community. Uh, ask uh, some of the tech recruiters. Uh, uh, or, or even better, ask... In fact, Singapore is a very... So like one of the VCs, uh, a good fr a friend of mine, uh, says that Singapore is actually a highly networked society, right? You are usually just two or three contacts uh, or phone call away from someone you, you, you need to speak to. And, uh, and uh, go and approach some of these people and say, you know, I, I just learned this, this new skill. I, I can build an app. I can build a website. Uh, I can fix your, your current website for you. Uh, can you, can you uh, give me the opportunity to solve some of your, your problems? Uh, what are issues that you have, right? Um, uh, for industries that are suffering right now in, 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 in due to COVID-19, right? Uh, they also have needs. They are, they are trying to stay afloat, right? Uh, and, and, uh, and obviously, many of them are not digital. So where would the opportunity be? The opportunity would be helping them to go digital, right? Some, some, some of them don't even have a website. So um, um, let me share with you some of what some of my friends 
have been doing so that it gives you some 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 inspiration to 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 do something right if you don't have uh projects to work on um uh, so one of my friend who runs a restaurant uh, a thai restaurant he got three outlets and uh, uh he has never gone digital uh and the restaurant was doing well until covid-19 came and in february march he contemplated just closing down because this business was down 90%. So what we do is that a few mentors and and myself we came around and and we we helped him to you know we we reframe some of his problems and then you know change some of his strategies uh and long and short of it we got him to renegotiate his rental uh close down one of the outlets and then move online move things online right uh, start to sell things online uh, he doesn't even know how to get online right so so he has to go and uh, figure out how to onboard himself into some of these platforms right uh and long story short uh last uh three weeks ago i think i got an update from him that he, uh, his sales actually doubled right so uh while all the other restaurants are suffering his sales actually doubled right he actually had to stop food panda and delivery from 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 ordering from him because he's got too much to cook so it's it's kind of unbelievable in covid-19 this business is is rising from the ashes right all because they made some key changes uh in their business strategy right from almost closing to now doubling uh in sales right and why because digital transformation uh uh for himself right even for a small company like him um another one of my 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 good friend uh uh also uh, very passionate about helping entrepreneurs um and um Uh, again it's a restaurant it was a restaurant in little india who got zero sales uh for 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 many uh, for many weeks uh also contemplated uh, closing down and uh, they didn't want to pay all those delivery platforms a uh, high high fees uh, so what she helped them with was uh it was it was a very simple problem to fix so what she did was she created uh, i think a, a a simple google form or something like that to 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 hire um uh, uh what do you call that uh, people who don't have jobs but they have a car so they can become drivers right and and she said that okay all in, in, instead of giving the 30% to the delivery platforms i give it to you instead so uh so if i give you at in advance uh order you 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 come and re- come to my restaurant and pick it up and then you can do the deliveries so she she vet through all the drivers and then she put them on on a uh, on the database i think it's a google like a uh, uh, database or something like that and uh, and the spreadsheet and then she and she decided to be generous and share with everybody uh all the other restaurants this database so anybody can call any of these drivers if they really need help so she's trying to solve two problems create employment for people who are unemployed unemployed and then also help to uh help these restaurants to save uh delivery uh, uh costs so so sometimes you you really have to look into into the into the business right uh, uh what are things that are impacting them right and then go up to them and say can i help some of help you solve some of the problems um some of i, I remember a few weeks ago somebody asked uh, how come i go to job sites i do, i don't i don't see good jobs or quality jobs actually i don't know what he or she meant by quality jobs right right uh, you know yeah there are some shitty jobs really but quality jobs is, is really de- determined by by you lah right uh, what you bring to the table quality jobs and uh so uh uh i lost my train of thought so so uh, well, I, i want I want to find find a a a job uh actually i spoke to a lot of my sme friends uh who are, who are still trying to survive this covid-19 right actually they got no time at all to put up job uh job advertisements right because they are busy fight, fighting fire every day right so but yet they are hiring they they want to hire they want to hire the it person they want to to develop a mobile app they want to they want to do a lot of things up because they have never gone digital before or maybe their 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 their, their current situation their current uh uh uh, uh it isn't doing doing uh, good for them so they want to change but they got no time to hire so the best way is to ask them you if you have a job seeker you can go and ask them and say look i have i can build this i have built this before uh would you like me to build something for you right and you can revenue share with me if i build it or something like that if i can increase your revenue uh uh can i uh m- maybe i'll take a uh, take a cut for of it from uh, from from you right so in 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 tough times like that uh, companies they only do two things right i'm i'm increasing my revenue and i'm and i'm trying to save as much as possible these are only two things that companies are doing 
they, they, they are not expanding, but these are the two things that they are doing, right? So if you can help them in one of the other two, you know, one of the two, or even do both, uh, then you find you get yourself a job, right? Or you get yourself that internship opportunity that you want, or, or that, that, that practice opportunity that you want, right? Um, um, I think I, I, I've shared enough. Uh, I, I'll go just straight to the last two slides so that I can uh, round it up, Max. Anyone else have a question? Uh, while I go to the last slide, please uh, ask me any questions that you, you have. Uh, I, if I don't know, I'll, I'll say I don't know and uh, or I can help you find out. <coughs> but I'll just go to the last uh, slide. Um, I, I run a Facebook group, a uh, new one to connect people to jobs, uh, especially the mid-career professionals. Uh, so it's not, 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 not tech people um, from, from all industries. And, and somehow there's this company that <coughs> uh, one of the employees uh, are, is in, the, in that group. And he told me he's hiring uh, developers, right? Uh, so the company is called Emporio AI. Uh, uh, must be an AI company, lah, right? So uh, if you go to the website, they have three roles. One's a data and engineer and one's a software engineer. Uh, actually, the third role is a CTO, right? So if you, if you can go and uh, uh, go to that link, uh, and write to this this person. Uh, I think for the software engineer, he's looking for C sharp and .NET or something like that, right? I had a quick chat with him. Um, my ex company is called Connect One. Uh, they still have uh, a number of jobs. In fact, some of them also not advertised because, like I said, no no time to 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 put them up. Um, uh, but their clients ask for it. Uh, and also, yeah, she actually just texted me uh, uh, just a half an hour ago saying that she actually has a list of jobs in a, in a Google spreadsheet somewhere. So it's not advertised on the website. So I'll try and send it to Max and, and just forward to, to you guys or something. Um, uh, and then another friend of mine runs startupjobs.asia. I'm sure some of you could be familiar with that. If not, then you can go check it out. He runs another company called TalentVis. So uh, he also very passionate about uh, 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 helping the tech community. So he, he has two job boards, I think. One is a generic uh, uh, job boards uh, listing all kinds of jobs. Second one is, is uh, to me, is what I call reverse pitching. That means uh, instead of the job uh, posting and everybody go apply, it's the other way around. Uh, I'm the candidate. I have these skill sets. You want, you come and approach me. So um, uh, the second link uh, is the one that has got all the uh, profiles, uh, LinkedIn profiles. Uh, of uh, uh, people from different different background, marketing, tech, and all that, right? Um, and uh, maybe some of you uh, already would know, uh, uh, you want to get some experience, you can always go and try Freelancer uh, and Upwork, right? Uh, and check uh, uh, check out. Uh, and I'm sure you guys may, may know some, some other tech-centric platforms uh, that I don't know about. Uh, you can always uh, try and do that. Um, don't, don't underestimate small jobs or... or, or, or easy tasks or something like that. Um, they always lead you to something else, right? Uh, and uh, one of my friends who is 63 years old um, uh, asked me that day, if, if worse come to worse, uh, he says, if worse come to worse, if you can't do anything at all, uh, you can't learn a new skill, you can't get a job, you can't do this, you can't do that, the, then, then the, the best thing you can do is go and help somebody else, right? Go find somebody else to help. And, uh, and then you, you, you'll see that uh, uh, your opportunity just presents itself. Right, so if worst come to worst, go help somebody else, right? Um, okay, my last one uh, is, uh, uh, I don't have time to ask you this, but I would like to, to maybe Max will help to consolidate. Um, I share with you are just very, very generic uh, stuff. If you want a more in-depth stuff, I, I do that as well, uh, because there's so many uh, uh, topics I, 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 I do uh, uh, to explore. Um, so if you want a more in-depth uh, session or, or some specific questions, uh, you know, you want to know about profiling, psychometric tests, uh, I, I don't know, how to build your LinkedIn or, or whatever, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, let me know. I, I may not be the one teaching, but I've got friends who, who does all these things, right? Um, the fourth question, I, uh, the last question is, is, is uh, I thought would be also useful. Um, I do know some friends who are, who are VCs or, or rather high up in the IT space and they like me they like to help people and uh, they have even more uh, clout to do that uh, because they are in higher positions and they are very 
they are very uh, uh, pro Singaporeans, uh, pro tech community, uh, wants to to help the the next generation of people and startups and all that. Blah blah blah. Uh, if you like, and, and also my 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 ex company Connect One, right? Uh, 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 they 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 are doing an awesome job. Uh, uh, um, finding uh, candidates for for their client startup, they are still hiring, right? So you can go and uh, 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 if you want, uh, I can schedule another session like that. She can come in and have a chat with you guys, and you can, and that's where you can talk about your tech skills and 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 all that. Um, last one is a small little tip uh, you can try. Uh, if you just simply go LinkedIn, right, and in the search instead of typing job scope or the person's name or whatever the job title, you type in, we are hiring, right? Uh, uh, because I did that in my recruitment days and uh, I just type in, we are hiring. And then you can see uh, uh, a lot of companies put, uh, uh, put that we are hiring in their, in their headline. And it's most likely their talent acquis acquisition person uh, or their HR manager that does that. So you might chance upon something because there are still companies hiring. So you just type in, we are hiring, you can see it. Okay, that's all for now. Um, uh, remember to, to revamp your LinkedIn uh, profile if you haven't already done because the number one thing that recruiters uh, do and the first place that we go to uh, to hunt for candidates is LinkedIn. Okay, GitHub is GitHub, but GitHub cannot search your profile. So if you want to look for your next opportunity, make sure you have the right keywords uh, uh, populated on your LinkedIn profile. Right, because uh, we, we, we use LinkedIn a lot to, to hunt for people, right? So if you don't have the keywords, uh, the system will filter you out, right? So you will not even come up to my dashboard. So, um, and, uh, so, so please brush up your LinkedIn profile uh, and keep it as current as possible. Ken, thanks very much, Max. Uh, thanks for, for overrun uh, and sorry for overrunning this session. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right because I think it's uh, there's a lot of value in imparting from you. And uh, as Kenny said, he's actually quite modest. It's actually he's he's quite connected with a lot of VCs in Singapore as well as a lot of people in Singapore. So if you want, you can talk to him. But yeah, if you look at his network, it's actually quite 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 well well connected. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. try to stay in, in contact as much yeah. as possible with them, uh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you know what you want and be more specific, then I can help you. Okay. So hopefully I've addressed your question. Uh, I apologize if I haven't really uh, addressed them. Uh, if that is the case, please just uh, direct your questions to Max uh, or Max will link us up. And I, if I know, I'll help you. Uh, if I know someone who can help you with your job, yeah, just let me know. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kenny, uh, for helping, and thank you, Michael, and everyone for coming here. I know it's we we overrun a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm quite shocked as there's quite a lot of people. And uh, Michael, do you have anything you want to talk about about this, or you are AFK? AFK. <laughs> thank you, there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Should be fine. I mean, we, we, we I mean, really appreciate all the input, all the stuff that Kenny has shared. I think a lot of us here in the channel has probably learned a lot from this session and about a lot of tips that are very practical and usable. I think uh, hope, hope, you, hope that the tips uh, shared by Kenny will be uh, applicable to people here who will be uh, applying for jobs and um, you know, um, getting help. Yeah, Thank, thanks so much. I mean, I learned a lot from, uh, from, from these people as well. Uh, I've always enjoyed uh, talking to people from different backgrounds. Um, so if, if, if you're keen, uh, uh, let, me, let me know. I've got friends who will do a, another session like that. Uh, they, 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 they don't charge money. Uh, they just like to uh, share. And I think they will do a better job with me because they are more tech than I am. Uh, and they are more connected in the IT and ICT uh, scene uh, than I am. So uh, they probably can address very specific uh, uh, issues that you may have. Right, uh, I, I like for example, what skill sets are, you know, uh, who who is hiring at the moment and all that, right? So they, so they know better than I do. So I if you want, just just let me know. So right. Uh, if, other than that, if thank if you for your time. If the wants to reach out to you, what's the best way they can do that? Oh yeah, just uh, LinkedIn. Got it. Uh, do yeah, you LinkedIn. Have a LinkedIn username or yeah. I guess I it's in the event page actually. So I actually added 
the link in. So I'll yeah. just add it in the telegram. It's also uh, on my yeah, it's also on right here. So at right. the bottom of my uh profile, uh you, you can just a uh, snapshot or something like that and uh, uh if you all connect to me, can you all please identify yourself uh, because I cannot remember all your names. So just say that you know, I was in your Friday session or something like that. You know, don't don't just link in to me because if I see an unfamiliar face or a funny picture, I'm just gonna delete. So and not accept. So remember to identify yourself when you linked in to me. Thanks so much. Can yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Uh, everybody have a good night. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us. Yeah. Thank you, Kenny, for it. Okay, bye. Everyone else. Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye. Okay, bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Kenny. Bye. Bye.